That is not a sol good solution because it's basically, as someone described here, like putting a mockingbird in the wrong nest. Uh, and that normally causes a lot of damage to that nest and it's not good for the mockingbird either. Um, the big problem with that is that it is about forest. It should be about forest. And as one of the indigenous representatives just said at, at a meeting we had about this, I mean, forests are life. Forests are people, forests are, you know, biodiversity, forests are a whole interconnected set of ecological, social, cultural, spiritual values. I mean, for the people who are living in them, they mean much more than just a couple of trees or just a, couple, a, a ton of carbon. It's a whole life system. If you just try to put that whole holistic, you know, thing, trying to conserve that into this very square box that the FCCC has become. This climate convention, which is nowadays all about, you know, carbon accounting and just seeing how many tons you can really, you know, store and then how long will it save and then how do you calculate it when it goes out again, when the forest burns down or when a tree is, you know, just old enough not to stop going. All these complicated matters, you know, it just doesn't match. You cannot match these two things. So it's, of course, we are in favor of reducing deforestation. We should have reduced deforestation already. In 1992, governments promised to reduce deforestation. They would promise to reduce deforestation in the Convention on Biodiversity, and they promised to reduce deforestation under the Framework Convention on Climate Change and under the Forest Principle and as part of you know, all the Rio outcomes in 1992 in general. Why have some governments still not complied with that? And why is there now this proposal that those governments that have not complied with that, 16 years later, should probably suddenly get compensation for reducing their deforestation, while other governments which have complied, indigenous peoples which have conserved the forest on the territory, and there's very clear scientific data, maps of Brazil, of the Amazon, they see exactly that the Brazilian indigenous reserves, that's where the forest has been conserved, all the rest around it are high deforestation rates. Those people have complied with this, those people are doing it for themselves, and then they would lose out in an agenda in which only for reducing deforestation people get paid, but they do not get paid for forest conservation. Now, one of the things that is now being developed is, ah, we see this, there is a tension between equity and red schemes. Let's also include forest conservation. And yes, it's so difficult that will not be paid for through a market, but then we'll set up a fund for forest conservation. But there's a very big trick there, because the argument has always been that we need, you know, carbon markets to finance forests, reducing deforestation, because they will provide a lot more money. Now, if you combine carbon markets then with a tiny little fund for forest conservation, it means that three or four big countries with a lot of forests that have been very irresponsible until now and not reduced their deforestation until now, they will get lots of money. Well, you know, all those countries and indigenous peoples that have been conserving their forests will get nothing. Women who have also are generally involved in activities that do not destroy the forest, they will not get nothing. They will get just, you know, peanuts compared to the big bad guys.